Hello and welcome to Continuing Conversations, a podcast presented by the VCU Office of Continuing and Professional Education. My name is Connor Lobb, and on this show, I'll be interviewing different leaders in the field of continuing education. For this episode, my guest is Sherry Wiltshire, the instructor for storytelling, an act of memory, imagination, and vision. A new course from the VCU OCPE. Sherry has a master's degree in clinical social work, has worked as a reporter, and is a member of the Virginia Screenwriters Forum. We'll be talking about her plans for the course, the nuts and bolts of storytelling, and we'll even show you how her storytelling techniques work in real time. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the episode. I'm here with Sherry Wilshire, the instructor for storytelling, an act of memory, imagination, and vision. Sherry, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Um, I've just gotten to Richmond. I'm glad to be here. I needed a little bit more city life, so I moved up from Williamsburg. Um, I'm not native to Virginia. I'm from the Virgin Islands originally. And um, I came here because this is where um, uh, I wanted to get my graduate degree, and and that's what brought me to Virginia. So I went to VCU and got my graduate degree. Um, Yeah. Yeah, you've been, you've been telling stories for a long time, and now you're the, you're the instruct. You've done uh, workshops like this in the past, and now you're bringing your skills to VCU OCPE. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, so I reached out to VCU, um, the Continuing Education Program, and I and I really I wrote this curriculum, and I wanted to kind of share it with more people, uh, get more people excited about storytelling. And so, um, you know, I told you all about it, and you guys were happy to have me uh, bring it to your program, to your department. Um, and so I named it an act of uh, memory and uh, imagination and vision, because I think those three components kind of help people build story. That's where people kind of gather the content they need for storytelling. Um, and I think this course, um, what I want to do through this course is to build competent storytellers. I think that's the ultimate goal um, and to have the participants kind of explore different ways of telling stories. Uh, so this is not necessarily a course for people who are uh, writing novels or writing short stories. This is not prioritizing writing. It's prioritizing kind of the development of stories as a whole, uh, looking at it from different mediums um, to include books, novels, short stories, but also scripts and stand-up comedians and comedy um, I'm sorry, Sam, comedians and photography um, and bedtime stories and people who give lectures uh, uh, as, you know, as part of their profession. Those are the many different avenues in which I want to store, study how stories are developed. So um, that's a lot, it's such a diverse array of, of like forms of art that you just mentioned. So like for you, and I think some people might not think of like photography as storytelling or or comedy storytelling. So like for you, what is storytelling? Yeah, so storytelling is sharing a piece of your understanding of the human experience with an audience using characters, conflict, and some kind of story structure. So when you start kind of sitting back and analyzing the world around you, and you've come up with a way of seeing that world and understanding that world, uh, when you start to share that with other people, that's storytelling. And so if you're doing that behind the lens of a camera, you know, you're finding those moments out there that you consider to be beautiful through your lens and you're capturing it, that still image, uh, whether it be of an object of a person. Um, but you're doing that with the intent and the purpose of wanting to share that beauty with someone else and get them to enjoy that beautiful moment, you know, or maybe it's beautiful can be expanded not to think of pretty or attractive, but beauty in the sense of, uh, I saw, I saw a human experience. I saw, um, I captured something that was real. I saw two people engaging in something that I thought was, uh, poignant or, uh, emotional. And so, I want to share that through a picture with an audience, with someone else, and it and 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 therefore it it becomes a story. 
you know, it, it has a context. It has, a, you know, it has a framework around it. Um, it's got characters, whether it be an object or a person, and it's got like things happening, whether you can see them moving or not, or hear anyone talking over it. All of that is happening in a, in a photograph. And so therefore you have a story. And the same but, thing, yeah. Like, and like you have like so many famous photographs in history that, um, like I think immediately of like that one um, with like the two soldiers kissing, like the V-Day photo. And, and it's like, that tells its own story. Just people are like, oh, like, I mean, you kind of know the, cause you know the context of like what is happening at the time. So that's a really interesting way of, of looking at storytelling. I mean, I guess it is the kind of like what it is at its core. At its core, I think so, yeah. I think it's literally sharing a piece of your understanding of what you see in front of you, which is, which is the people in the world with an audience. That, if you do that in any kind of way, it becomes storytelling. You know, dance is a form of storytelling. Um, the only reason why I don't think that my course might be best for dancers um, is because I do uh, appreciate and prioritize personally the written word or the, or, or words, I should say, not the written word, but the words. Yeah, using, you know, speech, verbal, to kind of get that across. Yeah, so I mean, when did you, when did this become a passion of yours, telling, like, relating these kind of experiences back to people in the form of a story? Um, when did this become my passion? So uh, the question, I remember when you sent me my questions, how did you become interested in telling a story? Okay. Yeah. And I thought to reframe that so that I can really understand where, how did I come to where I am today? Yeah. And I reframed the question as how did my career become driven by stories and not music production? So wow. I reframed that question because when I was young, there were two things that I was doing that I was actively doing on a regular basis as my hobbies. I was writing and I was making mixtapes. Those are the two things I was doing. So I was writing in my journals and in my diaries. I was writing runaway letters. I was basically plagiarizing fairy tales and putting myself uh, as the protagonist in those roles and just kind of really exploring, just kind of writing and putting down my feelings and my adventures and things like that. And then on the other hand, the other thing I was doing was listening to the radio all day long with recorded cassettes, recordable cassettes and recording music off the radio onto these cassettes so that I can have my favorite songs that give me a certain mood or emotion all in one kind of place. And so I, would, I had about 15 to 20 different recordable cassettes <laughs> at the end of my childhood of music that I just loved hearing from the radio. So I think ultimately working with people drove me to tell stories uh, and, away from music, and away from music. So I got my first degree, undergrad degree in English and my first job was a news, as a newspaper reporter. Oh, and cool. so the shape, that shaped my professional lens and I began to kind of take on telling other people's stories and figuring out how to think critically about things that I hear are affecting other people in the community. You know, that was my first real job. So from there, the joy in working and collaborating and teaching and sharing with other people through writing is what became more prominent in my life than anything to do with music. Um, when I finally discovered that making a movie began with writing a script, the game changed completely for me. Um, I don't have to write a novel and that took a huge weight off my shoulder. I don't have to pretend to understand the mysterious and vague and experimental short stories that were in the New Yorker or in Harper Magazine because in a script, I could be straightforward. I can write anywhere between 10 and 120 pages. I could tell a complete story and then collaborate with a group of people to make something visual that then more people will more likely engage in and understand. So this is where I belong as a storyteller. I belong in film and this is where I have found myself. So to answer your question, trial and error, I think is how I became interested in telling stories. Like anything else, right? Very, very <laughs> relatable. I, I like, I, it's very cool to hear you talk about um, making mixtapes as a kid yeah <laughs> you know, that's like I guess I mean it still definitely exists today but I think in the form you did it is very cool like you having all the because I can just picture you roll, like rolling around in the summers with all these like cassettes and like one of those little uh 
cases and you're like popping them <laughs> into the stereo and stuff yeah like mom play this or whatever you know um <laughs> that was totally me too you know and i think that i, I still love to give mixtapes or mix cds right now as uh, gifts to people and i really do believe that the that when i'm creating them that when i'm looking for music to put on an album to say like this is my own creation of an album i'm i'm kind of telling a story through that album you know that there is a beginning a middle and an end in those albums that i like to make where like the music and it's rhythm just kind of, they all synchronize together. They all kind of feed off each other. And there's a story in that as well. I mean, that's a little meta, but I kind of like to feel like storytelling is a part of making music as well. <laughs> in that sure. way. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like your approach to storytelling is like, um, well, it's just like, it's, it's like documentation and, um, exp and like sort of like translating that back to people in a way that is like palatable or not even palatable, but just like, easily digestible yeah so somebody can can like get the emotion and the feeling of an experience that you're telling them you yeah know? that's very cool yeah exactly um, so so I think you, you've kind of gotten into like what is your approach to storytelling and what is storytelling's purpose that was kind of the next thing that we were interested in talking about do you have anything you want to like add on top of of what you've already said like to that purpose yeah I, I think I the purpose I want to encourage people to connect with some form of telling a story. Cause as I said, the form for me wasn't going to be a novel. The form for me wasn't going to be a short story. And I've already talked about how photography, you can see storytelling through photography, or you can create storytelling with photographs and even storytelling being in music. I mean, of course the song lyrics themselves but also in the compilation of putting songs together. Um, so I want people to kind of connect with a form of telling a story. And I think that is because it's one of the oldest ways in which we connect to other people. So the second thing that I think is why I'm interested in storytelling is because um, I think it's important that, that that connection with other people is made. Um, it, it's, it really is the oldest way in which we understand each other is when we share and uh, kind of live amongst one another. You know, we live amongst one another in some kind of a collaborative way through understanding what our experiences are. And those experiences come through to us through people's stories. So I wanna give people the tools to think more critically and creatively about what they want to say so that they can excite someone, engage someone, uh, inform someone, uh, or just make a connection with someone. Yeah, it's I like it's you just took us back in time, like all the way to, you know, like early humans, like sitting around a campfire telling and like cave paintings, all these kind of things. It's very, it's very cool. And like um you mentioned finding your form of storytelling in filmmaking. Um yeah. and just talking about I I it I think it's it's uh it's cool to hear a storyteller like yourself talk about all the intentionality that goes into like the like the form of your story and you just think about all the things you see in movies and television and like why is each particular thing there well it's because there's like a mind behind it making it happen um but making it for the purpose of having an impact on the audience you know that's 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 where that type of intentionality that's the reason for that intentionality is because i am stories are meant to be told stories are meant to be shared um and that means i have to keep the audience listening i have to keep the audience engaged and um and i think that's very important to to get across to i guess new storytellers in in whatever way you know um not every photo not every photograph is going to captivate uh, the attention of everyone um, unless um, there is that intention behind why that photograph was taken. What is the story that you want to tell? Well said, lovely. Um, so, so you've so uh, I think we have like a like a nice like bedrock solid understanding of like why you're you love storytelling and like what it can do so when did you become interested in helping other people tell their stories um yeah so i think 
once I got my clinical social work degree from VCU, um, and I started engaging clients in discussions around their mental health, uh, that is really what uh, made telling this kind of idea of moving away from writing novels like books and into like really just expressing and understanding uh, what your experiences, your visions, your imagination, your memory, when you, you know, um, walking people through those things so that they understand who they are better and why they believe what they believe about themselves and other people. Um, that's when really storytelling started taking shape for me. I was helping my clients navigate their stories. And it is really, it takes me back to becoming a journalist. That's why I always connect being a reporter to where I am today, because I was telling people stories with that same um, motive or purpose then as well. I took in what the community was telling me, what they say was affecting them, what they say was hurting, harming, making them happy, um, and turned those into news reports for the general public. Um, and so I was doing the same as a mental health worker, um, helping my clients understand what they say was hurting them, making them happy um, and harming them, helping them kind of understand why that was happening. Where did it come from? So that they have a better narrative of, of the life that they've been living. And so um, kind of a new, new question a little bit. Why do you think it's important to understand the narrative of your life? Yeah. Um, because you can offer that narrative. Well, I think it's important for you to understand the narrative of your life so that you feel strong and confident in who you are first. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, the goal, the purpose of being a clinical social worker and working with people on their mental health is that we clarify the narrative so that you don't think of yourself as a problem or a mistake or, you know, um, something negative, but just clarify for yourself who you are and live confidently in that clarity. Um, so that's, that's what you get from it personally. And then what you can do with that clarity, with that clear narrative of who you are and what experiences you've lived through, and you understand how to share that with someone else, you can begin, you can begin talking about it. You can begin telling other people so that they can say, wow, I have also experienced that. Or no, I haven't. I understand what you said, but let me share with you what I've experienced. You kind of open up the communication. You open up those doors to connect then with other people. So that's kind of the what you can get from it personally. A clarity on who you are, a clarity on what you've been through, a clarity on what you've seen. You know, it, So it can be kind of removed from you as well, but it, you know, but it can be clarified for you. What did I experience in that situation when I overheard those two people talking about X, Y, Z? You know, now I've got some clarity around it and now I can share with confidence to other people so that they can see if they connect in the same way that I do with the world. Yeah, so it's kind of like, um, not only is storytelling like an act of memory, imagination and vision, like you sort of like enshrined in the, in the title, but it's like also, um, connection and I had another good word that I was going to use for this and I can't remember it now oh <laughs> uh, okay moving on but yeah that, that was that's very um that's just a lovely way of looking at storytelling I really like that um that's so cool um so you know in in um in today's job market what do you think is is useful about um storytelling well uh one way that i've come to understand the cover letter as a job application document is that it is a chance for you to tell a story about yourself a true story that pertains to how you have either one acquired the skills necessary for the job or number two how that job and your values align so of course there is a structure to the cover letter that may not seem appropriate to some people um, for stories, 
But I guarantee that looking at it through that lens will make your next cover letter easier to write. It'll make it more enjoyable and it will help your cover letter stand out to HR, especially if your resume is light on work experience. It's so, like, yeah, good. No, yeah. No, sorry, I didn't mean, didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. So I, I think about an experience, this is a true story that I have that worked in my favor when I needed to prove to an employer that I was able to coordinate the schedules of several people and projects during an interview. I told the interviewers a story about my DIY wedding. So I managed a budget of $10,000 and brought 175 people from six different locations together in the Virgin Islands for a wedding. Now think about how much more relatable and digestible my example of coordinating people and projects is now when I use that story. And that's not a story that you can typically put into a resume or a cover letter, maybe if you're really creative and good about it. But I saw that opportunity during the interview to kind of expand beyond uh, what might seem, what might be missing in the documents I gave and told them another story of how I, of something that I lived through that I did that really is about coordinating projects and people. Yeah, that's very, it's kind of like that, um, that, that common interview question where it's like, tell us about a problem that you dealt with and like how you dealt with it. And yeah. you're like, boom, here is how I did my, like organize my wedding, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. With, with X amount of resources and, and did these, that's super cool. So yeah, I mean, if, if storytelling is like communicating your experience to people, that is a, uh, like, as long as, you know, you have your resume and it's like all buttoned up and nice and um, has the proper sort of formatting you need to get, to get it into the, the front door, then you have this skill now that you can, that you can use to, um, to help tell, tell them about yourself and, yeah, let exactly. them know what you're capable of. And think about the connection you're making in that moment. So, you know, who, you know, I'm not saying everybody that's going to be interviewing you has been married, but they know someone who's been married. They probably desire to be married or they're married themselves. So now it's a relatable experience of a wedding. And we've seen lots of wedding TV shows to know how um, emotional they can become, how disastrous they can be, uh, or, or, you know, what memories they create for people. <laughs> So I'm now connecting with a person on a, on a very personal, very relatable level of this was my wedding and I was able to put this together. You're going to think like, yeah, I remember my wedding and it was as smooth or not be based on either I had a bad coordinator, you know, or I was a bad coordinator, you know? And so you get to see it. You see it there, like right in front of you. You're like, yeah, if you could coordinate a 200 person wedding, you could probably coordinate for my, for my company especially if you could do it like you because i i don't know a lot about weddings um but from what i understand they're like crazily expensive so <laughs> they like <can't> ten, <laughs> yeah like 10 grand 175 people like boom 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 that is like sounds impressive you know yeah. and like the fact that you can that you like have that sort of like the tools in your toolkit to be able to tell that and and, and get get the points you need to get across is pretty cool um you know um so i think we i think we've covered sort of a lot of the things that i wanted to talk about with you um and i think that the myths i think we've certainly talked about how storytelling um can help you on a personal level in terms of like all the amazing things you were saying about learning about your narrative so you can um like be strong in yourself and and relate it back to other people I still haven't thought of that word I was thinking of. It was a really good word that I was going to use to describe that, but it's gone. It's lost in the ether. Maybe I'll write a story about it someday. <laughs> um, a man will um, but, and I guess kind of the last thing um, is, is and, and you've, you've said things about this already, but like, if, if it's like kind of like a skills-based thing that we're thinking about, like what sort of like skills are housed within storytelling and like what skills can someone expect to learn about in the storytelling course? Yeah, so in my course specifically, um, listening is going to be an important skill that is gonna come out of this course because we are telling our stories virtually over Zoom. And it is, a, it is paramount that 
we listen closely to get the gist of what people are sharing. Um, because the technology itself is going to create uh, kind of a block for us. Um, and so really honing in, listening to what people are sharing is going to help us better understand what they're, what they're saying and whether or not what they intended to share with us is what in fact happened. So they're gonna, listening skills are gonna be very, you know, it's gonna be like fine tuned. Um, and the purpose of listening so well is so that we can help each other with giving and receiving feedback. Um, so feedback, giving and receiving feedback is going to be another skill that's acquired in this. Um, and I wanna move people away from thinking of feedback as criticism, mm. because I think that's where people uh, then get, um, you know, they just, they, 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 they step away from wanting to do it. Everything is great. It was a lovely story. It was beautiful. I loved it. Nothing, nothing needs to change. And I think because we think we're criticizing each other, we're putting each other down or we're finding faults. But um, being able to say, uh, have a critical thought about someone and give someone the information they need to create a better story, to be more succinct and specific and emotional and targeted is only good for all creative crafts. Um, and so getting that feedback and giving that feedback is going to be essential in this storytelling course. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, um, I like the uh, idea of alert, learning about listening too, because I think that's something that um, I think you kind of hear about it like in the general sort of like mindset of people is that others people don't listen to other people as much these days and it's all you know like it's all cell phones and the internet and social media and no one listens anymore so I think that's a cool um thing to be able to learn and I did I did remember what the thing was what I was trying to was. think about so it, was, <laughs> it was particularly when you're just talking about um learning about your narrative and being able to share it with other people um and like sort of like help them in that way it's like storytelling is like an act of service in that in that yes way. So yes, I remembered it, internet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, an act of service, definitely. And also giving feedback is an act of service, you yes. know? So I want, listening is an act of service, you know, because it really is you um, kind of taking yourself out of the situation in a, in a, in a moment to kind of receive, to take in, to be, to be humbled enough, to be gracious enough, to take in what someone is telling you, to really process it through your mind by being very in tuned and tuned in to what, is, to what the words are they are sharing, to, to the words that they're sharing coming out of their mouth. And so that's kind of a gift and act of service. And then to respond critically is, is an act of service because I don't think so, you know, in, in general, in many conversations, you know, when you're on your phone and you're at dinner with your family and someone asks you a question or someone's debating something or someone's saying something, we may not give so much attention to thinking critically of how we respond or how we engage in those moments, you know? We're just a person at a table interjecting when we see a moment to interject, maybe being flippant about how we interject. Mm. Uh, but giving feedback and making it necessary for the purpose of encouraging someone to continue their craft is, a, is an act of service because that means I have listened adequately. I have really processed what you said and I am thinking critically about what I'm gonna tell you that's going to improve this. It's all about improving this. It's not about making you feel bad about yourself and put down the story that you're trying to tell and never tell it again. Yeah, I mean, because we were talking a little bit before um, we like went live, so to speak, um, about writing and, and doing things like this. And I think there's like a, weird perception in um like because this isn't necessarily like a writing workshop like you've made that pretty clear but I think there's like a weird perception is that I have of like writing workshops where it's like super cutthroat and kind of like people are not trying to lift each other up necessarily and I think it's really important for creative people when they get together to try to tell stories that it's like very encouraging and like keep on going like I love this this and this um and it just sounds like you're creating a really like safe, like calm, encouraging space for people to come and, and bring their stories and their, and their methods and their forms and just kind of like have a big intermingling of, um, of storytelling, which is super great. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, it kind of leads me back to why I do this and why I think it's important. And that again, goes back to because I want a better relationship with people. I, I think mm. my participants have to find um, that within their creative journey. Uh, my learners, let me call them learners. My learners need to find that within their creative journey is, is where do the people come in? Where does your audience come in? Um, because that's what's going to make your story really meaningful and really impactful and really, you know, really, um, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but it's, it's going to give it that extra umph when you have identified what the audience needs to hear from you. Yeah, it's well said. Yeah. Well said. What do you have to share kind of thing? Like, what, how can you help other people? right with your yeah. story that's super awesome um okay so the last thing that we kind of is there anything you want to sort of add as a little bit of a little bit of a garnish on top of this conversation um i don't know uh i i i taught this course in the spring and it was well received and i've made a couple of tweaks uh based on their feedback and i'm excited to do a second run of this and see how those tweaks uh, fly with the next group of learners. Um, but I'm excited. I, I, I like the idea of hearing other people, hearing what people come up with. I'm, I like that. That's what my favorite part is. It's how people use their memory, the visions they have and their imagination to come up with something uh, to share. And, and, and then when they get the confidence to share it out loud, that's what I'm here for. And so I want to, I want to help people do that. That is the purpose of coming to the course is if, if you want to explore ways of telling different stories through different formats. And you talked this, you told this at William and Mary previously. William and Mary. Yeah. At the uh, Osher Institute of lifelong learner learning. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I think it's going to be, um, it's, it sounds very exciting and, and fun and cool. So what we're going to do now, is we're going to go away for a second. Um, yeah. Sherry gave me a cool storytelling exercise that I'm just going to run through and come back and read out. And we're going to do a little bit of a, an exercise based around that. And so you, you all can see kind of what cool things can come out of taking this course. So we're going to, we're going to step away from the microphones. I'm going to scribble down some, some things furiously and we'll come back. Okay. We're back. Uh, I, I wrote this little story based off of the structure that Sherry provided. Um, so I'm going to read that on air and I, and this is cool because I just did this in a few minutes um, and I'm going to have Sherry sort of describe the story structure that she gave me and sort of the intention behind what she was providing. And then I'll read my little thing. So you can all see sort of what you can do with storytelling and the places you can go with it. Um, even, in a short amount of time if you need to. So Sherry, do you wanna sort of explain to the folks at home what the what's going on? Yeah, sure. So Connor's gonna tell us a story about himself and he is going to use a simple story structure which goes like this. Once upon a time, blank. Every day, blank. One day, blank. Because of that, blank. Because of that, blank. Until finally, blank. And Connor is going to fill in those blanks to tell us a complete story about himself. Now to give him more context, I've asked Connor to come up with an adjective that describes himself. Um, it could be an adjective that describes him and who he is at his core, the very essence of who he is, or it can just be an adjective that describes an aspect of him something he felt about himself in any moment in his life. So that's gonna give us the context to the story or help him put some context to his story and make it more specific and targeted. And the structure that I read out uh, will uh, help us as an audience receive his story in a way that makes sense to, to us as people who have been listening to stories forever, right? Um, so let me explain why those pieces of the structure exist for those who are new to storytelling, 
So once upon a time is where we begin in stories. It kind of sets us up for where we're at. Uh, every day kind of continues that storyline in the beginning, uh, what is going on in that everyday moment. One day, one day is where things change for the character in a story. So one day this thing happens. And because of that, something else happens. And now we're, the character's off on a journey. So because of that thing that happened that one day, this happens. And because of that, this happens. So now we're off on a journey, we're off on an adventure until finally we're here at the conclusion. This is the end of our story. This is where we're, we're at at the end. Um, so this is very simple story structure. If you look at any story, a book, a movie, uh, a movie script, um, this is how the stories develop. And so Connor, if you're ready, yes. please take it away with your story. Tell us about yourself. Okay, so uh, once, once upon a time, I didn't pay much attention in public spaces, to other, to other people in public spaces. Then I ran into an old woman in a grocery store. She pointed up and said, can you grab that? I smiled and stretched out my arm to the top shelf and handed her the purple box of Raisin Bran. This is a pretty common occurrence now. I actually enjoy helping people out in grocery stores who can't grab what they need to. And whether it's at home, grabbing a pan for my roommate off the highest shelf, or just that woman who needs her Raisin Bran, when I'm out and about, I look for people who can't quite reach what they're stretching for. And that's, that's it. So try, try to stick to the structure, try to kind of have some development in my awareness of others, you know? <laughs> nope, and that is, that is what I got from your story, that there was a development of awareness of others. So you began with once upon a time, I didn't really pay much attention to the people around me until one day I was asked to reach a box of Raisin Bran from high above in a grocery store. And then because of that, you realized that this is something you can do for others or that's something that, you know, is useful, that you're useful and good at. Uh, you began looking for ways to help other people reach things that are high up until finally you became the person now who will see that someone can't reach something and get it for them automatically. Yeah. So that is a story about yourself. It, it says that you are a tall guy. <laughs> and uh, and that's it's as simple as that. You did it. Because this truly does happen to me because I'm I'm six foot six. I'm very tall. So I've been in many grocery stores and many people have been like, can you grab that? And I'm like, yeah, I think, yeah, it's just like kind of, um, and, and actually it's cool. Cause as I was writing this, I, I, I went and I thought about the development piece of it. And I was like, was I always like this? You know, it kind of made me think more deeply about my behavior and how I kind of operate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, like, it's more of like a thing that happened. I mean, it ha truly happened once I got like noticeably tall and people would kind <laughs> of like look at me and be like, that guy's huge. Um, but, you know, but truly now, I don't think that there was a time in my life, there was a time in my life where I wasn't sort of like looking out to see if, and not to get like too, I mean, it, it, is, it is kind of meaningful and deep, but it's like, if you have some sort of like, ability you know i'm super tall i can help people with certain things so i like to look out for that and i think that there was a time when i wasn't always necessarily doing that you know especially when you're in a rush and you're just trying to get around but if someone's in need and i can sort of like save them a few seconds by grabbing the raisin bran or whether i'm at home and my roommate can't reach the thing he needs to reach it's kind of like a warm fuzzy feeling to do and um this was a cool exercise um yeah. and especially hearing you describe um how it unfolds in terms of the structure that was very cool exactly. so i think why this structure kind of exists in the world as like the basic story structure is because it really lays out for a storyteller what what your story is supposed to kind of do you know and some people may think that that's too uh, authoritarian or too structured or something 
but there is a purpose to telling a story. There is an objective in telling a story. It is a, it is a professional craft. And this mm -hmm. puts you on that journey without you even knowing that there was a journey you were going to be on. So Connor, you went from, you didn't, you know, when you lived this experience as a, a person who wasn't paying attention and then now you're like, I'm really tall, I could just do this if I just look out for people who need my help. It wasn't something like you, con you know, it wasn't like a conscious, like, you know, kind of, I, you know, I had to, I had to make myself want to care and get to the place of wanting to like help people. You kind of just lived your life and you did your thing. But then what this story brought out for your audience is kind of how, you know, you, you can, you just automatically now are doing that chivalrous thing. You're doing that service thing. You're doing that nice thing by just being more aware of how tall you are and how beneficial that is to somebody else. And that's what the audience takes away. It's like, look at Connor's personal journey. He went from just kind of like, I don't care that you can't reach that to like, no, I'm really tall. I can help people reach things. <laughs> I just, I, I'm like sitting over here just trying not to laugh really loud because I just love that this is like, it's just this like the, the thing about me being tall is like just a, like a central element to this podcast now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, no. But it's also just like you're, it's like, a very core, look how much emotion went into like that I got from that story. And it's all a story about you just helping people get things that are high up, you know? And, and truly like, um, like we were talking about like, you know, like I enjoy writing, Sherry obviously enjoys writing. Storytelling is a really um, amazing thing to know how to do. And I learned a really cool lesson through doing this because I had the, I had everything but the beginning until the very end. Like I had like, I was like, oh, it's like a funny story of me, like helping this woman get raised in brand. Like this has happened to me like plenty of times in my life. One time it happened with my mom, which was kind of funny. And she thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, she was like, oh, she had, the woman asked you to get this stuff and you just did it. And I was like, yeah, it's because I'm huge. Like, of course I did. <laughs> of course. Um, and so I finished initially and I was like, well, this doesn't really have the once upon a time thing. It just kind of has the everyday bit. It has like, yeah, like if I see something, I like grab it for them or whatever. But it, yeah. but then it kind of thinking about the structure and like what Sherry mentioned about how this is like a craft, you know, it's like, I was thinking, well, there isn't a lot of, like, there isn't any change in the story. This is just like the everyday. And then I was mm -hmm. thinking, well, did I always do that? Like, I don't think I did. I think yeah. that like, there was like teenage Connor definitely was not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Teenage Connor was like, when are we leaving? Yeah, this exactly. Place? I can go home. <laughs> it's, why is this woman in my way trying to get something when I need the thing that's behind her? <laughs> was, and, and people, um, like, I don't, you know, I'm like, I don't have like a, like kids, but I know people with like kids will appreciate you got your, you got your, your buds in your kids just kind of like kind of walking along and nodding. That was hundred percent me yeah. when I was, when I was younger, it's like, I wasn't paying attention to things, but you know, you, you grow and you get older and you kind of are like seeing other people um, and trying to just be more helpful, you know? Yeah, like naturally, exactly. And, and, and yeah, and that's the story. That's how you know you're tall. And that's how, and that's why your tallness is relevant to me as a person, because I saw the growth. I'm a short person now, so I can relate to this on many levels of like, I need you around in my life. But yeah. I could also just relate in the sense of the growth of being someone who was just in their own world. But then you were like, wait, I could do this thing easily without anybody having to ask me. I can just do it because I'm just already up here. And now I do it. Yes. So it's like, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that you were that, that you're that person. Wow. This yeah. was fun. This was good. Great. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like that. I'm glad that you're excited about the course and for, you know, people to, to join me and learn more about storytelling and, and find the right story that suits them, the right, you know, medium for the story that they want to tell. Um, yeah, that's why, that's what makes me happy about it. Yeah, it's, um, you know, for, for creative, everybody's a creative person, right? Yeah, and if like sure. you sort of really are like into it, I think it's learning how to storytell in this manner, I think would be great and, and fun and cool and, and, bringing your stories to a group of other people and reading them aloud is really helpful too. And it sounds like that's 
kind of like the, the bones of it, which is amazing. And, and positive feedback is great. Um, and all these kind of things. So, um, do you have any, any kind of final bits of wisdom you want to, you want to sprinkle onto the podcast, Sherry? Uh, I want to say that there, there is a story in everyone. You do have a story to tell you, you have unique experiences. They're important to who you are. They define who you are. They explain why you believe the things you believe and you have a right to share them. Um, Mm. Yes. You have a right to share them. You have a right for people to listen to them um, and, 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 and give, and people, for people to give you grace and space to do that. So come to the class, come to my class and find that, to have that space, to be given that freedom, to share uh, with the purpose of building community, building an audience, building a following where people are like, I want to hear your story. I want to hear the stories you tell because uh, I relate to them, even though I haven't lived your life, I find what's relatable inside of them. And, you know, I can't, there's nothing I can add. That was beautiful. This was, <laughs> this was an amazing experience. And don't forget storytelling and active memory, imagination and vision begins July 6th, runs until August 10th. That's this summer, Tuesday nights from six to eight on Zoom. Yes, it is it's going to be an uh, asynchronous course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think there's uh, components on Canvas and then we meet once a week on Zoom. Yeah, this is, which is super cool. Um, so yeah, uh, everybody check it out. And we'll have a, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're, if you're finding this on Facebook, there will be links in the description, like every good podcaster says at the end of their show, where you can find out more about the course, learn how to sign up um and yeah definitely definitely give it a chance check it out if you are at all interested in storytelling and thank you all for listening we'll catch you back next time thanks for listening i had a great time talking with sherry and i hope you'll check out storytelling an act of memory imagination and vision on july 6. you can find out more through the link in the video description or visit our website at go.vcu.edu slash storytelling.